Two and two to Harvey Keen. One strike away. Sandy into his windup. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed a perfect game. I'd like to introduce the 2014 National League Cy Young winner, Cy Young winner, and the most valuable player and the best in baseball, Clayton Kershaw. Oh, and two. Hey, what's going on? Dodgers Nation, DMAC here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Who is the greatest Dodgers pitcher of all time? Well, I guarantee it starts with a K. We'll get into that in just a second. But quick reminder for all latest Dodgers news and rumors, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. It really helps out the channel. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Who is the greatest pitcher in Dodgers history? Is it the great Sandy Koufax or is it the great Clayton Kershaw? And if you had to pick one to pitch in one game with everything on the line, who are you giving the ball to? Let me know down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So today we're going to try to settle the debate once and for all. Who is the greatest pitcher in Dodgers history? Is it Sandy Koufax or is it Clayton Kershaw? I asked you guys this question on the Dodgers Nation Twitter account and 61.5% said Sandy Koufax, 35.3% said Clayton Kershaw, 1.1% said Don Drysdale, and 2.1% said other. And that was with 3,590 votes. So let's start with Sandy Koufax, the left arm of God. It was once said that hitting against Sandy Koufax was like staring into the sun with the sun coming at you at around 100 miles per hour. Willie Stargell once said that trying to hit Koufax was like trying to drink coffee with a fork. Now, looking at his career numbers, Koufax was 165 and 87 with a 276 ERA, an 1106 whip, a 269 fib, a 25.2 K percentage, a 6 walk percentage opponents hit 202 against him he had 54.5 f4 in 2324 and a thirds innings pitched now unfortunately Koufax's career was cut short due to severe arthritis in the once in a generation's left arm but he still pitched 12 seasons now the first five weren't so spectacular in his first five seasons he was 54 and 53 with a 394 era and while he did flash that elite talent at times he had some command issues and the light really turned on when Dodgers catcher Norm Sherry told Koufax to turn down his intensity on the mound he was quoted as saying Sandy we only got one other pitcher out here and at this rate you're going to be out here all day why don't you take something off the ball don't even try and strike these next guys out just throw it over the plate and let them hit it and Sherry said that that is when the light bulb just went off in his head and from then he really fix those command issues. After walking 405 batters in 691 and two-thirds innings through 1960, he would issue just 412 walks in the final 1,632 and two-thirds innings for the remainder of his career. Now, when it comes to the story of Sandy Koufax, it's all about his peak. I call him the Beatles of baseball. The way he dominated his sport from 1961 to 1965, Koufax went 120 and 47 in 223 games, 221 starts. And if you look at his MLB ranks in that stretch, he held a 2.19 ERA. That was good for third. A 2.16 fifth. That was good for first. A .97 whip. That was good for first. A 194 opponent's batting average. That was first. A 26.5 K percentage. A 6.4 walk percentage. He had a 46.3 F4. That was first in all of baseball for pitch. Second was Jim Bunning at 33.3. So you see that level of dominance between 1961 and 1966. Koufax led all National League hurlers in wins three times, earn run average five times, strikeouts four times, shutouts three times, whip four times, and complete games and innings pitched two times each. He also tossed four no hitters in one perfect game, won three pitching triple crowns, claimed three NL Cy Young awards, 
and garnered league MVP honors once during that period. But what really sets Koufax apart is his dominance in the postseason. He went 4-3 and three with a .95 ERA, a .825 whip, 61 punch outs in 57 innings pitched. On October 2nd, 1963, Koufax set the World Series strikeout record by striking out 15 Yankees in Game 1 of the 1963 World Series. The Dodgers won the game 5-2 behind Sandy Koufax's six-hit pitching performance. Koufax topped the record set by Brooklyn Dodger Carl Erskine 10 years ago to the day. Koufax tossed his shutdown Game 5 of the 1965 World Series on three days rest, and then he tossed another shutdown Game 7 on two days rest. So Koufax has those two big World Series MVPs, and like I said, when it comes to Koufax, it is all about that dominant stretch. Last five seasons, 22 wins per year, 195 ERA, won three Cy Young Awards, five ERA titles. He became the only National Leaguer to win pitching's triple crown three times, leading the league in wins, ERA, and strikeouts in 63, 65, and 66. He was dominant at Dodger Stadium, where he went 57 and 15 with a 137 ERA, a 176 opponent's batting average. And I like this stretch. From 63 to 66, he had a 186 ERA. Just to give you an idea of how elite that is, 35 qualifying Hall of Fame pitchers never have had an ERA that low, even for one season. So not for one single season have they posted an ERA as low as 186. And Koufax did it for three years, from 63 to 66. Now, unfortunately, that elbow pain began in 1964. And by 1966, Koufax was ready to call it a career. The question is why. I don't know if cortisone is good for you or not. But uh, to take a shot every other ball game is uh, more than I wanted to do. And to walk around with a constant upset stomach because of the pills and to be high half the time during a ball game because you're taking painkillers out. That's, uh, I don't want to, don't want to have to do that. What is your thought about the loss of income? Well, the loss of income, all right, let's put it this way. If there were a man who did not have use of one of his arms, and you told him it would cost a lot of money and he could buy back that use, he'd give him every dime he had, I believe. That's my feeling. I don't regret one minute of the last 12 years, but I think I would regret one year that was too many. Now, something else to consider with Sandy Koufax was the fact that there wasn't very much margin for error. And that's because the Dodgers offense, well, to put it simply, they just weren't very good. Just look at his perfect game. The Dodgers win by a final score of one to nothing. And L.A. recorded just one hit that night. Legendary columnist Jim Murray wrote, the team behind him is the ghostliest scoring team in history. This is a little like making Rembrandt paint on the back of cigar boxes, giving Paderewski a piano with only two octaves. Caruso singing with a high school chorus. With the Babe Ruth Yankees, Sandy Koufax would probably have been the first undefeated pitcher in history. So there's no question that Koufax is in the conversation for one of the game's all-time greats. The sad thing is that his career was cut short. I mean, just look at his 1965 season, 382 strikeouts. He ends up retiring a year later. So Koufax, there's no doubt that he's one of the best pitchers of all time. The question is, is he the greatest Dodgers pitcher of all time? Well, let's talk some Clayton Kershaw. For his career, Kershaw has posted a 2.49 ERA, a 1 whip, a 3.57 FIP, a 2.06 opponent's batting average, a 27.6 K percentage, a 6.3 walk percentage. He has him in overall F4 at 69.5, 379 games, 376 starts, and 2,454 and two-thirds innings pitched. He also also has three Cy Young Awards. He also has an MVP award. He has one no-hitter in his career. We also know that no-hitter could have been a perfect game. I call it the perfect no-hitter. Thanks, Hanley Ramirez, for that error. But still, one of the best pitching performances the game has ever seen. If you look at his most dominant stretch from 2011 to 2016, 1,277 innings pitched. Kirsch posted a 206 ERA. That was first 
first in all of Major League Baseball. 0.91 whip, that was first. A 226 fib, that was good for first. A 196 opponent's batting average, that was tops in the league. He had a 29K percentage, a 5.2 walk percentage, a 23.8 strikeout to walk percentage. He was first in Sierra at 266, first in F4 at 43.4. The second most was Scherzer at 30.5 F4. So Kershaw, he had a very dominant stretch where he dominated his sport. He was cruising, and then all of a sudden, the Astros started cheating. And you look at that statistic. He had thrown 51 curveballs and sliders in that game, and the Astros didn't swing at once. So let's say Kershaw tosses another gem there in Game 5 against the Houston Trastros. And you got Game 1 and Game 5. He wins the World Series MVP, and that's his crowning postseason moment. But unfortunately, he was robbed of that. Then the following season, he did struggle in the World Series, a 7-3-6 ERA against the Red Sox. And then really, it was a nightmare reliever appearance against the Nationals in 2019. But then in 2020, he bounced back. He had that 13 punch out game against the Brewers, and he pitched very well in the World Series. He posted a 2-3-1 ERA in 11 and two-thirds innings of work, had a .857 whip, was really strong against the Rays, and he did get his World Series. So one World Series for Clayton Kershaw compared to Sandy Koufax's three. No World Series MVPs compared to Sandy Koufax's two. And if you look at their careers, Kershaw has more strikeouts, 2,670 to Koufax's 2,396. But I think the difference is career for Kershaw and the peak of Sandy Koufax. I think if you had to give one of these two men the ball for a Game 7 winner-take-all, I'm going to give it to Sandy Koufax. When you look at the longevity and the better start of his career, the more consistent he was throughout, I think Clayton Kershaw has had the better overall career. Kershaw has that 2.49 ERA, lowest ERA in the modern history. So I'm fine with saying Kershaw had the better overall career. But when you look at Koufax's peak, those three no-hitters, that perfect game, the World Series titles, what he was able to do in the postseason on the game's biggest stage. If you're asking me who's the greatest pitcher in Dodgers history, I have to go with Sandy Koufax. Give me Sandy Koufax as the greatest pitcher in Dodger history. But hey, it's like 1A plus to 1A. They're both great. They're both all-time greats. And maybe Kershaw comes back and has another moment in the postseason. But for now, I'm going with Koufax. But let me know down below in the comment section, who do you have as the greatest pitcher in Dodgers history? Let me know down below, Sandy Koufax or Clayton Kershaw. I want your takes down below in the comment section. My name is DMAC. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.